Ramil Malga, thank you, Kahirluk. And Minister uh, Stephen Donnelly, you're very welcome to the Shannon here to speak about this such an emergency issue about emergency departments, but it's absolutely crucial across so many areas. I want to thank Senators Martin Conway and Maria Byrne here for bringing this uh, through our private members' business. Um, but there is pressure in emergency departments, and both senators here have raised it, particularly around Limerick. Uh, for me, I want to speak specifically around the Celta area, Minister, and around CHO2. Port Uncle University Hospital and I suppose Ross Common University Hospital and University Hospital Galway. To my mind, Minister, there are three areas here. Number one is capacity in our emergency departments and how space is used within the hospital and how they are trying to manage. Uh, secondly, I suppose a reduction in the number of nursing beds, the step-down facilities that hospitals can use when community intervention teams are coming to help people discharge. And thirdly, I suppose our GPs in the community. Around capacity, Minister, you'd be fully aware that Port Yonkley University Hospital has a, has a catchment area of nearly 400,000. It's based in East Galway, but it covers a huge area. It's a hospital for Athlone, over 20,000 people, but it covers Roscommon, Westmeath, Offaly, Tip, as well as Galway. Um, and, Ros and it's just, it, it experienced its worst January ever um, for numbers, for trolley numbers. It really did. Um, I, there's close to 1,000 staff that are based in Bandeslow. Um, I fought hard in 2019 to secure a meeting at that time with Minister Simon Harris. Um, at that meeting, we were able to move forward a project that the, H that the senior clinical team in Port Jimcla had around a 50-bed ward block. Um, you know, we were able to get funding allocated to move that project on, to move it to the next stage. Uh, that's now under construction. People can see in Port Yonkla that that's under construction, which is wonderful. And it started back in 2019. It should have started five or six years before that. But the hospital is now under construction. However, we still don't have any additional beds right now in the hospital. We have 13 single beds. Uh, Minister, um, there's been huge pressure on the services. I just, you know, they are converting the outpatient department to allow eight single rooms, eight single uh, rooms, uh, you know, en suite. That they'll also have two additional rooms. They're doing that. They've tried to make these changes within the hospital, but it's a hospital that dates back to the 1940s and multi-bed wards and so on, you know, like you can only imagine. Uh, but there is an amazing team there that have been tried, striving over the last number of years to cope. Um, Minister, I know that our general manager and the senior clinical team have put in now for 10 additional bays into the emergency department. That submission has gone in from Celta, from Port Yonkla, submitted to the department. Um, Minister, I know that you will be looking with the HSC and with, I suppose, the new and, and interim uh, chief executive, uh, Bernard Gloucester, I believe, who's going to be taking up this role. It is crucial that we're looking at capacity issues and it's crucial that we're looking at is it modular or some types of additional accommodation bills here around EDs. But there is such a pressure because in the ED in, in Banlaslow, in Port Junkla, it cannot cope with this pressure. And it's the pressure we've just seen because of COVID, because of RSV, because of these viruses that are circulating. The other challenge just in our area, and you'd be fully aware, is just that we do have an older population. It's in a regional area. It's coping with a, not, not a large city centre urban population, but we are spread out and we're managing a sort of a more regional, sparsely dispersed population. It's older and it has different needs. And the challenge is, um, as I mentioned, that the second issue for me here is the reduction in the number of nursing home beds in the Celta area. And I'm sure you're very aware of this, but we've lost nearly 150 nursing home beds. There's been closures around small nursing homes in Roscommon and in East Galway, Kiltormer, um, you know, Dysart. There's been a lot where it's small nursing homes. And I know this has to do with feasibility, but Minister, I'm asking for innovation around how we support uh, nursing homes and that have beds available for step-down facilities. We cannot lose more beds in an area that is struggling so much um, at the moment. We, we cannot, we cannot. And I suppose I'm asking here really to the heart of, is there any type of cooperation model, a co-op model, within smaller independent nursing homes. I know there's, there's larger corporate entities as well, but I suppose I am asking about how we look at this to come up with some other solutions around uh, nursing homes, how we get access to those beds. Um, those, uh, Minister, I suppose the very final thing for me is around GPs, and I just want to thank you because I know we worked very hard with Minister Anne Rabbit uh, before Christmas, and you did this, um, you know, we had meetings with GPs locally in our area, and we got 436,000 that was allocated. I know uh, with your support, with government support, 
to, to help GPs in that area. And that provided Westhoff facilities for GPs all around the Banislow, South East Galway area. And that meant that it's relieving pressure, hopefully, on hospitals and on EDs. But Minister, it, it's absolutely crucial that that access to diagnostic services that you have provided now for GPs through, I think, under the winter service plan can be continued, that those supports can be continued. Um, I suppose in relation to Roscommon University Hospital, Minister, I mean, it is phenomenal multidisciplinary teams there as well. Um, you know, I know that the National Ambulance Service are looking, as has been done uh, with Ennis and with Limerick, about how to identify patients depending on their level of need and what services, you know, whether Roscommon University Hospital can support these patients. And that, that's really important that there is a referral for these medical assessment units. But also with the Galway, uh, the, sorry, the Roscommon Mayo Hospice. And again, that's a wonderful new facility. You were there in November 2021 with a wonderful opening. Uh, but that facility is due to open shortly. Like staff have been trained there in the next couple of weeks. That's an additional eight beds. That's eight beds that um, staffing will come from Roscommon University University Hospital to provide staff for the hospice to operate. It's taken too long, like a lot of things, and I know there's a lot of challenges, but we need those beds and we need access to those beds. And so it's going to be absolutely crucial that we see that happening in the next few weeks, Minister, and that we're seeing as at the moment that there'll be staff training and that that's going to open shortly. Um, the other part I might ask around is just the Sacred Heart Hospital, just to consider that 50 bed unit as well. Again, this is all around capacity, Minister. And I know that the brand new HSC Chief Executive will be working hard around how to provide immediate uh, capacity around this. And uh, Gormaga, thank you, Kahir. Look, just my very final points are just Minister, 24 billion in the budget. We have a lot of support here, an increase of 17,000 staff. You've nearly 140,000 staff, 140,000 staff, Minister, you. in your department, in your area. Um, there is so much we can do, just if we can look at that really immediate works. access to additional or modular accommodation to expansion of EDs when you're at your next meeting. Gormaga. Thank you very much.